Hey guys, welcome back, and today we're going to talk about the Justice League Annual. So this is the first annual Justice League has had, and it deals with the plugging up of the Source Wall, or rather, we'll just go in, we'll just go in. So, the League, now company with Kyle Rayner, Starman, and Miss Martian, minus Aquaman still, because he's lost his memory, but by that logic, marriage should be in Atlantis, you know, turning down suitors, but whatever, whatever. They're on their way to the Source Wall, ready to plug it up. And we arrive at the source wall, and it does look beautiful, glorious, even with the huge hole in it. It's still great. Um, this story even makes an effort to talk about how big and how hard to sort of even grasp the source wall is. And even looking at it sort of opens your mind, especially because there's, you know, a gaping hole in it. So what is the plan? Well, the plan is to use, well, the Omega Titans from Justice League No Justice. You know, Mr. Miracle and Company... They found one. They found the Titan of Wonder. The Green Lantern Corps found the One of Wisdom. And of course, we have the last one of Mystery led by Thanagar. So we've all got a Titan, and everything's good. The question is, where's the other Titan? Why are we a Titan short? Well, if you recall the events of No Justice, that Titan, the, the Entropy Titan, is currently gone, gone, gone. But luckily, Hawkgirl gives off that same energy. So they're going to put Hawkgirl in the wall. And this is where it gets a bit dark and scary and a bit, whoa, we're going there. So we're going to put Hawkgirl in the source wall. And she'll become a permanent fixture in that wall for all eternity, if this works. So the question is, what are they going to do? Well, they gave Hawkgirl some fancy armor. And Jean has mentally prepared her. He's created effectively a mind palace for her. Which has all of her memories, all of her favorite locations, you know, from all of her different lives. And she's so happy that she kisses Jean. Jean goes, wait. Hawkgirl thinks, well, I, are you uncomfortable with that? I'm sorry, I didn't really want... And then she apologized if it was a bit selfish. But Jean's like, no, no, that's not the problem. It's not the problem. I sent something else. Something big. Something bad. It's Brainiac on the attack. And we then get a flashback to Brainiac and Lex talking about it. And it's nice to see Grodd still has the baby. It's it's weird watching him try to be intimidating with that baby. But Brainiac explains to Lex that he done goofed. Like, because remember, we found out earlier that he captured Starman, tortured and interrogated him for information, and then he let him go. And Brainiac reveals that, yeah, Starman could have given you everything you needed right then and there. He could have unlocked the remaining three energies you need, which you still have been able to unlock, because that doorknob you got with Perpetuous Symbol can only unlock so many. And now that the good guys have them, they can use Starman to seal the source wall, thereby ruining all your plans, because Lex, you're kind of stupid. So, Brainiac has gone down there to effectively get a hold of Starman. And, well, he does. And this happens well before Hawkgirl can fully merge with the source wall to fix all of our problems, because of course. And that's when everything starts to go down the crapper. As Perpetua awakens. And it's a really intense moment here because it almost feels like the source wall is trying to prevent that from happening. Like it's trying to legitimately hold her back. But Perpetua is also reacting to the totality. Or she's in the totality. It's a bit weird. With a flash of blinding light, Perpetua has has risen. And she looks she looks awesome, really. She's got a nice sort of other world. It's, it's otherworldly, but it doesn't really feel like you could place her in any one specific spot, at least in the DC universe. You might, she might be recognizable somewhere else a bit, but no, no. And this is the first creator, the great mother of the Monitor, the Anti-Monitor, and World Forger, the being who designed the universe before our own to be a dangerous, self-sustaining weapon. And she blows up the source wall, and it's great because everyone's freaking out. Everyone that you normally count on as being calm and collected is freaking out. Ganth is freaking out. High Father's freaking out. Orion, who isn't usually calm, but you know, he's freaking out. And Ganth says, all right, so this is a priority alert to every Green Lantern in a hundred million light years return to Oa, race to the center of the universe because the edge of space is going to rip open and it goes beyond, it's sensed everywhere on New Genesis, on the ghost sector, on Earth, Heaven senses it, the House of Heroes senses it, yeah, we're, we're all in trouble, we're all in trouble. Perpetua has broken the source wall and presumably because she just woke up, it took a lot of energy out of her, so the Legion of Doom now has her in a vat because 
that's become kind of a trope in stories now. At some point, some all-powerful being will be in a vat. So that's the that's the story so far. And the annual, I think, was actually was pretty fun. It was pretty fun, pretty straightforward. There wasn't a lot of padding to it. It was pretty much we have to attempt to fix the source wall. Something happens. We're chewing out Lex for a bit with Brainiac, and then the source wall breaks because mommy's home. And I really liked it. This might be one of my favorite annuals. At some point, I will have to go over what my favorite annuals are. Because I don't think I have any. Except for this one. But anyway, with that in mind, this brings video to close here. If you're new to the Bucket Think Tank, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out some other videos on the channel. It really helps, and I will catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing off. Mayor Fandom, serve you well.